Hello everyone! The eBay Stealth Account Guide for 2021 video we made received a lot of engagement and most of you asked for more information on how to create a remote computer. If you haven't watched the Stealth Account Guide video, click here. If you have watched it, this video is for you. I will create a remote computer right now and share my screen with you. So let's go. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into my screen. And before we do, please don't forget to like and subscribe. All right, guys. So first of all, what is a remote desktop computer? That is the question we're going to answer before we actually go through the steps on how to make one. This actually gives you the option to open up a whole new computer and a whole new IP address on your computer that you're using. So essentially you will actually have two computers in one, two IP addresses in one. So the tool that we're going to use is Cometera and we're going to use the VPS hosting. And the first thing we're going to do is sign up and you can do this for free. So you can go ahead and put in your email address and a password. And then once you do so, you're just going to go ahead and click go. So after you're done with this registration, you are going to come into this council homepage. And from this stage, we're actually going to have to verify an account. So after you've done all of the verifications on your account and have made an account, this is what it should look like. And we're going to move the example over to my account. So for your example and what your dashboard dashboard should look like, it will be empty. It won't have any of this information on it. So what you're going to do is move over to the left hand side and you're going to jump into my cloud. And then from there, you're going to go ahead and click on servers. Here you can see the servers that I have and that I use. So what we're going to do right now for this example is to open up a new one. So you're going to actually go ahead and click on create new server. And now we're going to go step by step as how you can create a new server for your computer. So when you are in the verification process, you're going to be asked for your billing address, your PayPal or credit card and so on, which is fine. And then when you do that, you're going to come right here to this stage. So this company, Camatera or Camatera, gives you options to select an IP address for your computer basically anywhere in the world, as you can see Asia, North America, Europe, and Middle East. And for this example, let's go with North America and select any of these uh, United States countries. And from there, we're going to go ahead and select our operation system. And this is whatever you prefer. But for this example, we're going to go with Windows. And we're going to go with the standard 64 byte. Why? Well, just because it's the standard. So here you have the license price. You can pay monthly or you can pay each time you use the service. And this all depends on you and your preference. I personally use hourly. And this is due to the fact that I can get a higher and stronger VPS. So for choosing your server, we're going to go with the basics. So for the license price, you can go ahead and choose it by your own needs. You have the option to pay monthly or by the hour. I personally select by the hour. So for the choose your server, the type that we need is the B general. CPU is the number of CPUs you want on your computer. And of course, the more there is, the better. So the higher num the number, the better it is. I personally go with two or four. But you can go ahead and select one. This is also completely fine. After that, we move on to the RAM. Again, I usually select one to three. Maybe I have one to two with four, but not sure. But here we're just going to go ahead and select one, just going for the basics. And the SSD is basically the storage that you have on your remote computer. 
Again, you don't need more than the basics, so I'm just gonna go ahead and select this option here. And if we end up needing more of any of these, we can always just increase it. I personally don't use the daily backup or management services, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and skip this part. Uh, we're gonna keep it on the public internet network. After we have all of those set in place above, we're going to go ahead and finalize the settings. Go ahead and type in a password and then validate the password. Then you have the server and name number one. Let's go ahead and name it Zeke Test for this example. And then you're gonna go down and this took all of everything that you selected and came up with your billing cycle and pricing. So here we have the monthly billing cycle. So here you can pay $28 a month, which will give you all of the basics. And basically what that gives you the option to leave it open all the time. But as I said, I usually use the hourly billing cycle. So here it basically tells you when it's on, it's going to cost you 0 0.038 cents. And when it's off, it's going to cost you 0 0.009 cents. And of course, these are the prices per hour. So approximately here, it's gonna be around $7 when it's open and it comes to around $27 a month when it's always open. So this is what interests us basically. You can always increase the speed, you can always increase the power, and of course you can increase the storage that you need. Okay, so now let's go and create the server. So now you can see that the server is being worked on and it will complete soon. Okay, so in this part, we're just gonna go ahead and finish up the process. Here you can see my other servers. I have the new server here as well at the bottom. And this is where you come to get all of your server information. Here you can see that the power state is on. The operation system is Microsoft Windows Server. It's the zone is going to be in New York. This is my IP address. And then let's go over to info. Nothing too special here to go over. For connect, we have like the connection type, username and password. You can get all of that information there. And then underneath networks, here we see our network references. And then you have the configuration where you can change your speed, your storage, etc. In all of this information, you can just change from here. Then you have your reports. Underneath that, you have statistics. In statistics, you will also be able to see in the main dashboard. And that's pretty much what it looks like when it's all complete. Now we're gonna go to the next stage where I actually open it up through my computer. So now we're going to connect our computer with our new IP address. And I am using a Mac for this example, but if you do use Windows, it's, it should be exactly the same. We're going to go ahead and use the Microsoft Remote Desktop. And then down in this little arrow, you're gonna go ahead and select Add PC. And yes, on your windows, it might look a little bit different, but it's basically all asking for the same information. So what you're gonna do is fill this part out with your PC name, and of course you have that here. So your PC name is basically the, IP, the new IP address that you're trying to connect. On our user account, we're gonna go ahead and open a new one, and of course your username will be your new IP. And of course, your password that you have created for this particular IP address. And for friendly name, we're gonna go ahead and name it the Zeke Test. And of course, go ahead and click on Add. What I like to select is also connect as admin for the general and then under display, I'm gonna choose a little bit of a different setting here. 
Then you have the option to change um, device in audio. Again, this is all personal preference. Then once you have selected all of those options, go ahead and click on add. And you can see it here, double click on it and we're going to go ahead and connect it. So here you're gonna change up some information, go ahead and type in your password and go ahead and connect. Okay, so once you have given all of your information and all of that that you have from this new IP address, the password and everything, you basically just double click on it, log in again, and you have a brand new computer. So what your new computer is going to do is have maybe a couple of these new stealth accounts, new eBay accounts. And then you have a lot of methods like proxy, VPS, VPNs, you just need to use one of them. So for this, I'm using Kamatera or Kamatera and um, Amazon AWS for a lot of them. And these are being used all together. All right guys, so that's basically how you do it. Now again, I have to remind you, use family members for new opening new eBay accounts and do not do it right away. Wait a couple days just to get some of those um, history into your new IP address. So it's not obvious that it's a brand new computer starting off with a brand new eBay store. Do not do this with fake identities. I repeat, do not use fake identities to do this. You will get caught, eBay will catch you, you won't get away with it, trust me, and just use your family and friends and people that trust you and that you trust them. Use their names and their personal information. All right guys, so if you haven't heard by now, Zeke is offering some amazing deals right now. So be sure to check out the link in the description. Have a good one and I will see you next time.